Hi folks, I'm John Eisman from LastChanceOurStore.com. Today we're standing, I guess, underneath or uh, in front of uh, one of the projects that we're working on. And this is probably one of our most favorite kit cars ever. This is a, a based on a 1957 Porsche 356. Um, some people refer to it as the bathtub car or the James Dean car. Um, so this vehicle was purchased uh, by one of our clients and um, he was having quite a few issues with the car in terms of handling, driving, safety, and uh, that sort of thing. So basically, what we'd like to do is share with you some of the things that we have found or saw or have seen on this car. Um, so now that it's up on the hoist, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of work. So we'll share with you in some other videos um, where we have the engine already removed from the vehicle. Um, we did a compression test on it. It was kind of um, halfway kind of put together. It wasn't properly rebuilt. Um, they, and they kind of did it on the cheap to be blunt. So they basically used, it looks like, a whole bunch of used parts and created one engine out of a couple of different Volkswagen motors. So um, we've ordered a lot of enhancements and we're rebuilding it completely. So we've split the case in two um, and we're completely changing everything. So the crankshaft bearings, camshaft and so on. So I'll share that with you in a video. We've got a lot of parts coming on order for it. So while we were waiting for uh, the engine parts to come, there's some things that we saw underneath that I'd like to share with you. So um, to start with, this body kit is a really nice kit. There's two or three different companies that make these fiberglass Porsche kits, and this is the best one of all. Um, the thickness, the quality of the fiberglass, I, in my opinion, would be second to none. However, um, the build on this vehicle and what they used for a chassis and some of the things they have done in the build um, is not up to safety standards or anywhere near the type of standards that we would have here at Last Chance Auto Store. So one of the things you can see, um, and, and we'll share with you in some photos, um, the original beam, this is a replacement beam that we've just set in. So basically we're dry fitting the front uh, steering and suspension components because um, there's a lot of issues and we'll have a lot of pictures showing the original beam. The original beam that was in this car um, is out of a, an older Beetle, not a Super Beetle, just a standard Beetle. Um, there's four main bolts that uh, attach to the frame head. And what we've done is we've purchased a top-of-the-line German-made uh, adjustable beam. So this is an upgrade to have the beam adjust, and you get quite a bit of travel um, in this particular beam. The beam that was with this Porsche was basically bubblegum welded everywhere and in the main structural pivot points um, is where all the corrosion was and we could literally stick a screwdriver through majority of the tubing uh, sections on the original beam. So what we've done is we've removed uh, the rusty out cobbled up beam. We have the new beam in here now and we have a bunch of new components coming. So you'll see on the end with the with the torsion pieces we've already got this set up. So uh, now that these are in and adjusted the next thing we'll be doing is replacing these seals uh, and they're a German made seal that come on the ends and then we'll be uh, installing the, uh, the new spindles and disc brake conversion kit and so on. So this is basically um, going to be all new in here. Now, I'd like to point out some of the things. So this Porsche replicar, um, when it's down on the ground, it's very, very low to the ground. And the client who purchased this vehicle believed the seller that everything was done properly and it had a custom uh, custom tube uh, chassis. Um, now it's kind of a play on words because the custom tube chassis they're referring to on this kit car, you can see here the little bit of tubing that they have um, is for the bumperettes on the front. So yes in fact there is some square tubing but it's not a structural thing because what we have here is a Volkswagen Beetle um, pan and frame head. So when you start looking at this uh, closer, so if you follow, if the camera can follow the screwdriver, you can see over here on the end, if you uh, come from the driver's side, you can see there's been several patches and not the best kind of welding. This we would refer to as bubblegum welding. 
not, it wasn't obviously clean nor penetrated properly. Um, so we've got a lot of welding along here and then you can see all these little squares and pieces and you can see that they've done them in several different sections and whoever welded it wasn't a very good welder or didn't have it very clean. So you can see there's numerous patches all the way along the frame head. Um, you can see in here there's some patching. So we're going to fix this up correctly. Some people would want to go gangbusters and say you have to take the body off of the chassis. Uh, you want to cut the frame head off and replace the frame head and replace the tunnel and replace all the floor pans. We are going to make sure that this is structurally strong and correct. I don't believe, but I'll, we'll know later once we start grinding, I don't believe we're going to need to replace this frame head. So this is just visually um, not a very attractive look at all. And as we come back further, so these are original uh, Volkswagen Beetle pans. And because it's a kit car, so things like these Porsches with the shorter wheelbase and also dune buggies, the tunnel and the floor pans, they need to be cut and shortened. And depending on the kit, anywhere from 10 to 12 inches, depending on what body you're putting on it. So with this Beetle chassis, you can see, I think the camera can pick it up, um, they did the angle cut, which is correct. So you can see along here where they have trimmed this off. And then same thing on the driver's side. They've cut it on an angle, which we like. But we really don't like, and I hopefully you can see it in the camera, all of these exposed hunks. So structurally, this is not welded properly. This is kind of like bubblegum welding. Uh, the part that really scares me is this main tunnel. So the tunnel that starts at the frame head, and you can see the span of my fingers as it comes down, this is referred to as the tunnel of a Volkswagen. The best way to describe it, it's the spine. So this is the main spine structure of this car. And they've cut right across, which they have to to shorten it. However, this is totally unsafe and not acceptable. So hopefully the camera can see this. So they've cut the main structure that holds the suspension and the engine and the transmission at the rear of the car. They've literally cut it across and then they've added this little plate on top of but not welded at all safely or properly. So you can see along here it doesn't look too too bad. There is some penetration but it's nasty in here with all the holes. But as you come around to the other side, so as we come around here, around the back of the vehicle, this is where it really makes you wonder what people are thinking. So you can see I've got, this is a number three uh, Phillips screwdriver. So this is quite a big screwdriver and you can see I can slide it all the way along through here, through these holes and gaps and same thing through the side. This is not safe at all. So you've got some, some flexing that's going to be going on and um, is not safe at all. So we will be cutting and removing this uh, bubblegum welded patch. We'll clean all this up correctly. We'll make sure that the tunnel and the floor is square and we will properly weld both sides inside and outside. We'll weld this all nice and uh, grind everything smooth and then we'll seal it with seam sealer and then we'll protect it. So um, this is definitely not um, safe at all. So we're going to be changing that on this uh, Porsche kit car. As we come towards the back, as I touched on earlier, um, also a play on words kind of thing when they're talking about uh, to our client when he's going to sell this saying it's a total custom tubular frame. You can see that they have uh, square tubing that they welded um, from here to the back, but you need that to um, kind of hold the back part of the body. So it's unfortunate that our client didn't have a chance. Because the car was lowered, it was foul weather. Uh, the man sent several photos of the car. It looked like it was a great car and a great deal. And when the deal seems to be too good to be true, perhaps maybe uh, this case um, it's evident, but um, this is not a custom full tubular chassis. This is a Volkswagen pan um, with some tubing added to it. Now we'll fix all this and it's, it's not going to be a, a major issue because uh, structurally the main purpose of the, the tubing along the back, the piece along the back and going up through um, is for crash standards and for the bumperettes 
uh, that they have. So it will give you some structural strength because without this tubing in the back, you just have the fiberglass shell. So um, the other thing that we noticed is, um, I think your camera can pick it up. A lot of stuff was kind of, I don't know if you would call it uh, backyard or driveway kind of fixing, but um, you'll notice up here, this kind of homemade stuff is the clutch cable. So because they've shortened this uh, roughly 10 inches for this kit, the cable, they kind of just made a homemade, uh, went to their local hardware store and um, kind of looped some cable and then a bunch of washers and, and not even grade 8 hardware. So this we're going to remove and eliminate so we have proper clutch cable because they sell an actual cable and mechanism that's for this specific purpose and design. Uh, so they just neglected to do that. And then you can see uh, inside they were claiming that it was a new clutch pressure plate and throw it bearing. And you can see this release bearing is well beyond its, its life in terms of all the pounding and rust and so on. And that would explain one of the reasons why the client was having such a difficult time uh, shifting uh, this Porsche kit car. So don't want to pick the car apart. Just want to point out um, some of the things that we see and things like this uh, we really don't like. But you know what? We're going to make it right. Uh, this will be a beautiful car and we'll share some more uh, updates as we correct some of the flaws in the chassis. And then once we do that, we'll also share uh, a couple of videos on the total build of this custom engine. So it'll have a lot more attitude and power. So I'm John from LastChanceAutoRestore.com, and I thank you for watching.